Sunday morning. morning. You need to get some friends that make you run harder. You need to get some friends that make you uh, go fast. You need to make some friends. That, because when you understand the greatness that God has called you to be, then you want folks around you to come be with you for the journey. Have I got anybody in here that you know that God has called you to be great, that God has called you to be special, that God has called you to do something wonderful? Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, COH, that's right, it's the good old Sunday morning, Hope, you are right here with your guest, your special guest and host, Reverend Dealey, and... Good morning, COH, <laughs> this is Pastor Tony. Oh, Lee. here you go again. Good to see you. Come on, Don Cheetah. Hey, COH, what's happening? <laughs> look, look, we're excited about what God's doing. Reverend will always be throwing me off because he is like the flavor flavor uh, hey. of the church. It's, it's morning excited. time. People got to be ready and up. We got to do our thing and get them hyped, you know? And we got a reason to be hyped, man. Yes, we, we got do. a reason yes, to be hyped. Indeed. This is the yes, last indeed. Sunday of the first month of, of 2021. Right. Wow. And one of the things that we were talking about and just reflecting on is how many testimonies we've heard right. just this That's month. Right. That's right. That's right. People would want you to think, well, this month has been real crazy. Yeah. And yeah. it's been crazy yeah, it's happened this month, crazy even stuff. especially in the nation, yeah. tragedies. Yeah. But when we look back over it, we've been getting phone calls That's from right. community of hope members who have had healings happen That's in right. this first That's month, right. who have watched their businesses uh, have new opportunities That's this right. month, That's who right. have been blessed with housing opportunities yeah. Yeah. this month. And so I'm grateful that I want to remind you on this last Sunday of January right. that God can do it. God can do That's it. That's what I'm gonna say this Sunday. That's God it. can do it. God this is the, do yeah, it. the Sunday of God doing it. God can That's do right. it for you right for where you, you are. That's right. How do I know? Because God's been doing it for your other That's members. Right. God's been doing it for other members of the COH fam. And I'm excited. I believe it from my heart that for you this Sunday, I want you to walk into this week of uh, believing God can do it. That's right. And even though we know God can do it, that does not mean that you still don't have to do what? You got to fight. That's still right. got to fight for it. That's right. We are still in the year of That's fighting right. for That's it. Right. So That's right. God can do it, but God is also uh, relying on you to do your part. And so, hey, man, God plus you equals victory. It is that simple. It is that simple. Yeah. So, and so we want to celebrate all that the Lord is about That's right. to do That's in right. your life this Sunday. We want you to have a sense of expectation, expectation, not just about what happens in service, but a sense of expectation about happen. what God wants to do in your That's life, right. not in your neighbor's life. That's we good. thank God God can bless your neighbor, not yeah. uh, in somebody, you don't, you, somebody you've heard about's life, and we thank God God can bless them. But I want you to have an internal sense of what God can do, do, for do for you. you. I don't That's care good. if you're That's an good. adult. I don't care if you're a youth. I don't care if you're a child. God can do it for you. God can do it for you at school. God, and, and then I want you to think about what is your it? What is the it you're hoping that God can, can move do. in? That's what right. is the it you're praying that God will work or work in? And we're believing that God can what? Do, do it. it. And, and listen, and you know why that's important, Pastor? I'm glad you say that because, you know, a lot of times we can see blessings for everybody else that's right that's right right that's right uh, you know we can encourage everybody we can tell them god gonna heal you god gonna see you through god but sometimes we don't have that same sense of expectation for our own selves that's right and today this is about you know what today is the day to be selfish mm -hmm. for what you're expecting god to do for that's you. right that's right that's god what that's what to, for, for you you that, and that's especially talking to somebody who's always seeing it for everybody else that you rarely really connect to what you want God to do for you. So to this Sunday, uh, this is about you. This is about you. God can do it. Look, I want to pray for us yeah, all. Yeah. God, in Jesus' name, we thank you that we are believing that you can do it. We thank you, God, for what you're speaking to somebody's heart even thank right you, now. Thank you. We thank you, God, that we don't just go to church. We, we are, are the church. church. And so everywhere we are, God, you're right there with us. So, God, uh, we thank you, God, for wherever anyone's watching us from, listening to us from, we thank you, God, you're right there right with there. them. Right there. And God. you're moving in a marvelous right. fashion. Right. So, God, in Jesus' name, we ask that you would bless this worship experience. Bless us, God. Do a work, God, in our lives, God. Let your power be felt That's through right. this worship That's experience. Right. And we thank God thank you, that God. as you do it, God, we thank you, God, that it shall be done. In Jesus' done. name in we Jesus pray. Name. Amen. Amen. And amen. That's good, man. I feel I'm excited, excited man. I feel, right. I, and I don't know about you, Pastor. I, man, 
I'm excited about this year, right? You know, like I'm, I'm, I'm sensing that that God is in the moving business, and even right now, just today, like right now in this moment, I just want somebody to just know that no matter how hard it's gotten for you, that God is right there with you. And I don't know who I'm talking to. It's been a hard four weeks. Now I think Mm -hmm. it's been a hard year, and it hasn't lightened up yet. But I'm, just, I'm talking to somebody specific, I don't know who it is, and you literally just got on, and you know that God is specifically talking to you. And I just want to encourage you this morning that God told me to tell you that God is still there, right there with you, That's right. and the That's breakthrough right. is closer than you think. Don't Amen. you give up, don't you yeah. quit, mm-hmm. don't you let go of it. God is about to do something special, and matter of fact, next Sunday, you're gonna type it in the chat. You're gonna say, you know what, God talked to me last Sunday, and this is what God did next Sunday. It's That's coming. Right. I feel right. it. Praise the yep. Lord. And I so even as we're thanking God for what God's yep. about to do for you, I want you to connect to somebody. Share this service right, right now. That's right. And make sure to share it with somebody. Let somebody know so they can be get their blessing as well. We love you, COH. Yes, indeed. God's going to throw your seeds in the air. Because God's going to do it. God's going to do it. What's up, everybody, and welcome to Community of Hope, the place where everybody has a chance. Listen, we don't care who you are, what you've done, or who you did it with. We don't care if you did it last night or you woke up doing it this morning. But listen, what we do know is that you're in the right place at the right time to get and become all that God has called you to become. And guess what? We believe that God has a blessing with your name. What church? That's it. Slam on it. Y'all, listen, I got in your face with me this morning. We just want to encourage you today and sing about the King of Kings. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane. Hey. Nope, that's where my help come, praise to the king. Hey. Hey. Now back there we give a praise to the king. Hey. Now up top we give a praise to the king. I said, look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane. Nope, that's where my help come, praise to the king. Hey. Over there we give a praise to the king.
do, 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 do. Oh, <laughs> hey, y'all. Uh, y'all caught me dancing. I was practicing. I was getting ready. Because y'all know it's rather than deal. Hey, 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 hey. That's right. Yes, indeed. That, and what is it? What time, what time is it? It is scripture of the week. Week, week, week. Week. <laughs> That's right. It's scripture of the week, y'all. And I, I, I'm excited. I'm excited. Why am I excited? Tell, y'all tell me why I'm excited. I'm excited because, number one, I know that somebody, not just somebody, a lot of y'all have been memorizing y'all scriptures because y'all want to be what? Y'all say it with me on the count of three. One, two, three. Ugh. Study strong. That's right. We got to be study strong. Hold on. I, I don't. T- what? Huh? Uh, let me say it again. Yeah, you. We are what? Study strong. That, there you go. All right. Just make it short. You know I can see y'all. I can see you. That's right. So look, uh, it is Scripture of the Week, and, and I don't know if y'all remember. So last week's uh, Scripture of the Week, we're going to deal with, but I got to give you this week's Scripture of the Week first. So I got to give you that first, so that's what I'm about to do. This week's Scripture of the Week, the Scripture I need y'all to memorize, get locked and loaded, it comes from... Proverbs, the fourth chapter, the seventh verse, and it says, the beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. I like that. It said, what, Proverbs 4, 7, the beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Wow, how simple is that? That's right, y'all. So make sure y'all got that. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. Proverbs 4, 7. That is a I love that that word right there because that's easy. That's right. You know what I mean? Because we know some foolish folks, y'all. So there's nothing like having some good old wisdom. Yes, indeed. Now, listen, last week's scripture of the week, last week's scripture of the week, what was it? Y'all tell me, huh? I can't hear you. It was what? First Corinthians, what did you say? 15? Chapter 57. That is correct. First Corinthians 15, chapter 57. And it said what it says. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. But thanks be the God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, listen, I got some folks and I got some special guests who are trying to show you that they are uh, study strong. Hey, let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. <laughs> First Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Youth ministry. That's what I'm talking about. Y'all better hold it down. That's right, man. Youth ministry holding it down. We got some of the most talented young folks in the on the planet. Y'all hear what I'm saying? On the planet. So listen, I, I thought about this. Mm. Oh man. I'm, I'm gonna need to be in different locations on this. Uh, I'm talking to my editor right now because I gotta do this for my young folks. So I'm gonna need you to put me in different locations on, on the green screen. Y'all, y'all feel me? Let's get this dance. Let's go. COH, man, I'm excited about uh, not just what's happening this week, but what's happening in this new month of February. And one, I want to make sure uh, that you are staying locked into the Hope Activism Institute. Uh, the Reverend Leslie Dwight has been doing an amazing, incredible job. Now look, uh, you can be able to check even previous episodes or uh, subscribe to it on podcast because uh, the Hope Activism Institute is on podcast, on uh, Apple Podcasts and 
um, on Spotify and on iHeartRadio as well as tune in. And so you can just subscribe to us, the podcast in any of those places, but also you can be able to check it out um, on our YouTube and those kinds of places. It'll bless you, I promise you, uh, the Hope Activism Institute on Thursday. So make sure to check it out on Facebook Live on Thursday at 7 p.m. on Community of Hope's page. Also, I got to say a shout out because I'm excited about my gear, about my shirt. Uh, if you peep it, it's a Godfident shirt. And it was sent to me and it was made by one of our own young people, Sister Sydney. And I am so proud of her. She's got a business and she is doing things like this. And so if you want to check out her business, get your own gear. Uh, she, you go to Instagram to at Sid Made It, at Sid Made It, S-I-D-D Made It at Sid Made It, and you can get your fresh little gear. Sydney, I am proud of you. I am so excited for how God is growing you and blessing you, and you are blowing up. Y'all know she's a beauty queen, right? No, I mean, she actually got the crown. She's actually official. Uh, she, she's a beauty queen. Uh, she's, got, uh, she's an entrepreneur. Uh, there's nothing our young people cannot do. And so, Sid, I just want to appreciate you. Thank you for my gear. Y'all need to see the cup she blinged out for me today. It's also, it says, best pasture in the DMV. I'm super psyched about what our young people are doing. And talking about entrepreneurship, uh, this is a year to make sure to get your money right. And we gave you all a tool, and I'm just so grateful for so many of you all have been reaching out and telling us how the Ramsey Plus system has been such a blessing to you in your finances and how you are growing financially by what you're learning. Uh, Y'all make sure, if you have not gotten signed up, if you're not plugged in, if you're not working the plan, y'all get up in there and work the plan and get that good info and work the play they've got there for you. They've got tools there for you, budgeting tools and other kinds of pieces. If you want, if you have not uh, registered yet, it's free. The church bought you a site license that's good for you all for free. A subscription is good uh, until the end of October. Uh, if you text HOPE FINANCES, HOPE FINANCES is one word, to 474747, HOPE FINANCES, to 474747. We want to be a blessing to you and you can get locked in. Uh, excuse me. Y'all make sure to do that because we spent the money so you could be blessed. We are investing in you. And so we want to make sure that it's right uh, for you. So come on, Hope Finances to 474747. Get locked in. And if you've already gotten it but you haven't used it, make sure to start using it so it can be a blessing that we intended for it to be. And with that, I'm excited for the opportunity to give. I thank God for one more time to be able to give, and I'm grateful to God for God has blessed us to be a blessing. I thank God for all the things Community of Hope has been able to do in community, but I thank God we've been able to do it because of you, because God has been using you as an instrument to God's honor, to God's glory. And then y'all know that we believe that God has a standard for giving. That's the tithe. That's 10% that whatever you get 10 of, that you give one back. That's 10%. Uh, but also, we thank God that God has blessed us to give. And in the words of Reverend Bill, if you've been blessed to give, it means you've been blessed to what? to receive. And so right now I want to pray for you, but you've got multiple ways to give here at Community of Hope. You can give on Cash App, dollar sign, give COH. You can give in the link um, that you can click on, that you can give text to give, uh, that you can give on the Givelify app, uh, that you can uh, mail in your gift, that whatever way you want to give, uh, that we are grateful. And you'll see all of those on the screen right here beside me. But we're grateful to God for how God uses you in your giving to God's honor and to God's glory. God, in Jesus' name, I thank you for these, your people. I thank you, God, for how you use them in their giving. I thank you, God, for how you have blessed community of hope to be a blessing. Now, God, bless your people in their giving. Bless them in their lives. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, COH. Have a wonderful, wonderful continued worship experience. I'm excited about what God is doing. Call out my name, yeah. You knew my past covered my shame. This amazing grace you shown so patiently. You shown so patiently, Lord. You.
Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Pastor Ware. Come in once again with your mental health moment for today. And today really what I wanna talk about is having better sleep patterns. One of the things that we're finding out even during this time of the pandemic and all of the restrictions that we're dealing with with COVID is that even though persons are home, they actually are sleeping less and not sleeping as well. And so one of the things that can happen if you aren't sleeping as well, one, you're not able to operate at your best, but we also are finding out that lack of sleep or having improper sleep patterns have actually been linked to an increase in depression, that actually not sleeping can make you depressed. So I want to be able to deal with a couple of things that can help us hopefully be able to change that. First of all, and I know this is going to be the toughest, it's the toughest for me as well, is that for the 30 and hopefully up to 60 minutes before you go to sleep, there should be no electronic stimulation. That means no phone, that means no iPad, that means no binge watching on the TV. The thing is this is that when we have that it keeps our brain in a hyper elevated state it really is able really not able to be able to start to kind of cool down and so what happens is is that even though you may shut your eyes after you've watched that last episode of whatever your brain is still going which then makes it much harder for you to be able to get into the proper sleep that you really need and so therefore hopefully at least 30 minutes, 60 minutes would be best for you to be able to not have any of those things, not checking that last text, if you're going to send that last um uh, social media uh, post, then do that at least an hour or at least 30 minutes before you go to bed. And yes, if you're even going to check your likes, make sure you do that at least 30 minutes before you go to bed so you can have that time without that stimulation. That's a great time to read a book. That's a great time just to relax, light a candle, listen to music, any of those things. Even though music obviously does have electronic form, it is not as um, negative in terms of helping you get to sleep. And so therefore that is okay. But we are definitely saying don't have all of the other type of stimulation. Secondly, and this is also something that persons deal with, watch what you take in right before you go to sleep. So obviously about an hour or so before going to sleep, try to make sure that you are not having anything that has caffeine in it, whether it's coffee, uh, soda, even tea. Now I know some persons may use certain types of teas, herbal teas, or non-caffeinated teas, then yes, those definitely can work. That can be a healthy sleep aid, so that can work. Also, too, physical activity. And so, therefore, if you want to get in that last uh, ride on your bike or do some push-ups or sit-ups or something else like that, those actually will also help you be able to sleep better. The average or what we would look at as good sleep will be somewhere between six to eight hours, obviously closer to that eight. Um, the thing is this is that as Americans, we're averaging a little bit over five, which is much less than what we should. So therefore, even as we get ready to head into talking about some exciting things in February, dealing with relationships, one of the best things you can do on your relationship might be to get some sleep so that you can be in a better space to be able to have those great relationships that we'll be talking about in the month of February. This has been your mental health moment. Peace. Hold it 
take my mind, transform it, take my will, Lord, conform it to yours, to yours, to yours. Righteousness, righteousness is what I long for. Righteousness is what I need. Yeah, righteousness, righteousness is what you want from me, oh Lord. What you want from me. So take my heart Brothers and sisters, I'm grateful to be able to share the word with you today, and the word is going to come from Ephesians, the third chapter, the 14th verse. Ephesians, the third chapter, the 14th verse, and it reads as thus, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through the Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be fulfilled, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is in work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ, and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I ask that you would 
join me as I go to God in the word of prayer. I want to uh, share uh, a discernment subject, my prayer for you, my prayer for you. Let us pray. God, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this moment that is yours. Grab a hold of me and use me to your honor and to your glory, God. Save somebody, heal somebody, deliver somebody, set somebody free. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Community of Hope family, all that are watching, this is my prayer for you. Look, it's an interesting thing. As a pastor, this has been an interesting season. And as a pastor, it's been, uh, in the past year, been a bit easier to pray. I don't want to say it's been easy to pray uh, because it's just been easy to get on my knees, but it's been easy to pray because it's been easy to know what to pray for. I mean, you know, I was praying for folks' health, and I was praying for folks' well-being, and I was praying for the safety of families, and I was praying uh, that God would be a healer in the sick room. I was praying uh, that God would uh, take care of folks' finances in the midst of this challenging season. All of those prayers, and prayers that I still feel are important um, and essential, but in this new season, as we have transitioned into 2021, as things, as we have transitioned administrations, as things uh, seem to be turning a corner, we're uh, not dealing necessarily with uh, uh, some of the tensions of the old administration, and, and we appear to be trying to wrap our hands around and really grapple with uh, a firm plan and dealing with uh, this coronavirus. Uh, the, I'm dealing with the fact that we seem to be heading towards uh, a new normal uh, while nothing really really is normal at all. And in the midst of all of that, I, I had to ask God, God, am I praying right? How should I be praying for your people? And what God did is God took me to scripture, had me to go to Ephesians, the third chapter in the 14th verse, so that I could see how another pastor prayed for his congregation in the midst of a rough situation. And Ephesians was written as a tribute to the Apostle Paul. And Apostle Paul was writing this while he was in jail in Rome. Apostle Paul was in jail in Rome. His charges were that he took a Gentile to the temple, that he took a non-Jewish person to the temple, and many attribute that to being a person who was out of this church in Ephesus. And so here we have Paul writing from jail, a jail in which he would eventually be killed, and here we have Paul writing to this congregation, this congregation that's concerned about his well-being, this congregation that is in the midst of all of this challenge, and yet and still uh, he talks to them, and, and through the book of Ephesians he talks to them about different situations, different circumstances. But here in chapter 3 and verse 14, he starts to pray for them. And it's interesting to me because I believe that the way that Paul prayed for them gave me a lesson about how I am praying for you all. And so I want you all to hear today, this is my prayer for you. And really not just for you, but for us. This is my prayer as pastor for our community. This is our pr my prayer for the community of Hope Family, for anybody who is connected to the us, anybody that's watching this. This is my prayer uh, for you. One, um, I believe that in this prayer, I'm praying that God does an inside job. That's right, one of the first things in my prayer is I'm praying that God does an inside job. Uh, that if you look in Ephesians, that third chapter on that 14th verse, it says that I pray uh, that out of his riches that God may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. And what gets me about that scripture is that Paul says, I pray that God with uh, uh, power through his spirit may strengthen you in your inner inner being. And one of my concerns uh, uh, with current theology, one of my concerns with theology over the past decade, maybe even the past two decades, is oftentimes we can get so caught up in telling you how to fight an outer enemy that we don't teach you about how to deal with an inner issue. Uh, the, the, it can be a challenge sometimes. We're teaching you so much on how to deal with your haters and how to deal with your doubters and how to deal with the folks who are trying to control you. But can I let you know that your biggest battle is not against your haters, your biggest battle is not against your doubters, your biggest battle is not against those trying to control you from the outside, but the truth be told, your biggest uh, battle is against self-hate, your biggest battle is against self-doubt, and your biggest battle is against a lack of self-control. And, and, and what I realize here is that Paul understood that he wanted God to do an inside job on the people there at Ephesus, that, that he knew that, that, that I, I know that God, you can work something on the outside, uh, but I need you to do something something on the inside, that I need you with the power of your spirit to give them 
inner strength. And I'm coming by to talk to somebody today because I believe that God wants to give you inner strength. I believe that God wants to get you to the place in which you stop blaming everybody else for all this going on around you. And that doesn't mean that everybody else isn't doing stuff. That doesn't mean that everybody else isn't an issue. But I've come by to let you know that once you start to deal with the inside, it can help you to be able to fight the battles on the outside. Uh, one of the challenges, my brothers and my sisters, that we can get so caught up in all of those things outside of us uh, that even if God fought every enemy we have on the outside, if you have not dealt with your inner issues, your inner stuff, your inner challenges, then God can pave the way on the outside of you and you'll be the one that will sabotage everything right from the inside. Uh, but today I want to talk to you about, and I am praying for you that God will give you inner strength, that God will give you the kind of strength that allows you to go where God says go and allows you to say no when God says to say no and allows you to move when God says move and allows you to say yes to what God says to say yes to. But that takes inner strength, that takes intestinal fortitude, that takes power on the inside, power on the inside to tell yourself no when you know you want to do it, power on the inside to have discipline. Uh, to be able uh, to, to not succumb uh, to everything and anything. Power on some of us uh, would have more money if we had more intestinal, internal strength to not spend your money on stuff you don't need and instead save and sacrifice so that you can have an inheritance for your children's children. Some of us uh, would, would, would be a lot better off if we had more inner Strength. The first thing my prayer for you is that God does an inside job, that God does a work and God's power moves on the inside. Somebody say, God help me on the inside. God do it on the inside. The second thing my brothers and my sisters, that my prayer for you is I pray that you get the blueprint. Uh, one of the things I understand very clear is if you're going to build something, a house or a building, uh, that you can't just go in and just start tacking stuff up, just start a uh, sawing and just start nailing, uh, but you need to understand the blueprint. And not just the blueprint, you need to understand the dimensions of what you're building, how uh, wide things are going to be, how tall they're going to be, how long they're going to be, how deep the foundation is going to be, that you have to have a sense of the blueprint. And Paul understood this and Paul prayed for uh, that congregation. Is after he said, I pray uh, uh, th that you being rooted and established in love uh, may have power together with the saints uh, to, 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 to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know that this love passes knowledge uh, that you may be filled to the measure of all all the fullness of God. Uh, in other words, it, it Paul said, look, I, I, I want you uh, to be one so rooted in love. Now, you can't understand the dimensions of love until you get rooted in love. And he said, I want you to be so rooted and established in love that you start to begin to understand how wide and how long and how deep and how high is the love of Christ. And, and somebody today, that, that's what I want you to get to a place of, is I want you to get Get to a place that you get the blueprint, that you start to really understand the fullness of God's love. And, and you can only do that when you're rooted in love. Uh, the challenge is that many of us uh, want to be able to understand the fullness of God's love, uh, but we don't have any roots in any kind of love. Our roots are in hateration. Our roots are in scandal. Our roots are in talking about other folks. Our roots are in gossip. Uh, but, but those aren't roots. Those are weeds. And those are Weeds will kill what God is trying to grow in your life. That when you're always looking at and thinking about how to tear somebody else down or, or jealous of somebody else or envious of somebody else or always hating on somebody else, those are weeds uh, that can end up eating away at, tearing away at the roots God wants to have you to have in God's love. Uh, but when you start to be able to celebrate others and just not worry about what they have and, 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 and just a happy for other folks, 
folks and, and, and not hating on other folks, then that's when you can get your roots and your uh, and be established in love. And when you have your roots and are established in love, then that's when you can start to understand the blueprint. That's when you can start to see things more clearly. That's when you can start to understand the dimensions. That's when God can start to express to you how wide and, and, and how long and, and how high and how deep is the love of God. And, and, and what I love about that, it says that I want you to understand that so that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. You see, at the time that you start to understand, start to grasp, start to get rooted, and that's when God can start to fill you with all of the measure of the fullness of God. And I don't know about you, but I want to get to a place in my life in which I am full of God, in which in which I am overwhelmed with God's presence, in which I am overwhelmed with God's love, that I start to see God's love and how God has been so... When you're rooted in love and you start to love on others, and that's when you can start to really see how much God loves you. And when you start to see how much God loves you, and that's when you can start to really feel and, and be full of God's power. You can be full of God's grace. You can be full of God's mercy. You can be full of all that God is because God is love. And when you start to really get it, it'll change your life. Why? Uh, because uh, uh, when I understand how much God loves me and start to walk in that and start to talk in that and start to live in that, I treat myself better. When I start to understand how wide and how long and and, and how high and how deep God's love is, I start to treat those I'm in relationship with better. When I start to understand the dimensions of God's love, the profundity of God's uh, patience and, and how much God loves me, and it allows me to treat my family differently. It allows me to treat my coworkers differently. And I walk in a fullness. That, that, in other words, I'm not walking around empty all the time. I'm not walking around uh, feeling like I, I don't have anything to give. But, but when I understand understand the fullness of God's love, I become an overwhelming flow, an uh, overwhelming well uh, of God's goodness because I, I get that I've got the blueprint and the blueprint is that I start to understand the fullness of God's love. And the third thing, my brothers and my sisters, I'm praying for you and I believe that Paul was praying for this church at Ephesus is that you stick around for the benediction. Now, I must admit, I must admit, we haven't been back to church for a while, but when we were at church, and churches all over the nation, talking to pastors all over the nation, there would be an interesting thing that would happen sometimes. The interesting thing that would happen sometimes was that after the sermon and after the altar call, uh, that some folks would start to tip out. They would start to tip out because they would want to beat uh, the issues in the parking lot. They would want to be able to get out. Uh, they would want to think they had places to go. But we always taught at Community of Hope, it's important to stick around for the benediction. The benediction is that final blessing. The benediction is that final prayer. The benediction is that final sealing to all that has gone on. And here we keep find in Ephesians that we see Paul giving a benedictory address that Paul at the end of his prayer says, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all all generations forever and ever. Amen. Now, I must admit, I must admit uh, that the truth be told, uh, many times I've read that scripture many times, I've read that scripture many times, and at certain points in my life uh, that, that I, I got stuck, I believe, in the wrong part of the scripture. Uh, that, that when, when I, I got excited about that scripture because that scripture gave me great optimism. I get excited about the scripture because the scripture uh, gives me a great sense of hope of God's ability to move in my situation. And I believe that God is going to do it in my life and in your life. Uh, the, the scripture talks about now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to the power at work within us. It's mind-blowing to me because the, that concept of the fact that God can do more, God have mercy, immeasurably more, more than I can measure, than all I can ask or imagine. In other words, that if I can think of it, that God can do way, way more. That if I can ask it, that God can do way, way more. And God can do it according 
to the power at work on the inside of me. I, I, I got excited. I always got excited about that scripture because it talked about the fact that God could do more than I could ever ask for. It talked about the fact that, that God really had more in mind than even I could imagine. If it was in my imagination that God could do more, that God had the ability, I, my highest imagination and God could do more for me than that. I'm talking about, y'all can see that, that scripture gets me excited. That scripture uh, gets me excited. Man, that scripture gets me excited. But I realized uh, that I was looking at that scripture uh, through a very young lens. I was looking at scripture through a very young lens because that scripture, uh, I was looking at it uh, 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 about what I could get out of it, that I was looking at it and thinking about what God could do for me and that, that God, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, uh, that, that God could do so much for me. Uh, but then it goes on to say, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever, amen. And what I realized was that I got caught up in one piece of it, but I missed the nitty and the gritty of the scripture because the nitty and the gritty of the scripture wasn't what God did for me. The nitty and the gritty was that in all God does for me, that God gets the glory. And, and, and my question for you, my brothers and my sisters, my prayer for you, my brothers and my sisters, is that in your life, God be glorified. That's right, that I, I, I I prayed uh, today and I'm praying for you all. I'm praying uh, th th that God does an inside job. I'm praying that God gives you the blueprint, but I'm also praying uh, th that in everything you do, God be glorified. And, and my question for you today is God getting the glory out of your life? That, that I need you to ask yourself that question. That is one of the most important questions for you to ask yourself. Is God getting the glory out of my life? That, and what I do is God getting the glory. And how I live is God getting the glory. And how I talk is God giving the glory. That, that, and the things that I do is God getting the glory out of my life because uh, uh, Paul understood our I'm praying for this church at Ephesus and I want them to know in this benedictory remark and this benediction that the, I, I don't want you to leave too early. You see, I was leaving before the full benediction was out. I was catching the piece of the benediction, but then I was gone. I was catching the piece that got me excited. But the fact of the matter is I missed the part that got God excited. And, and, and my question for you, my brothers and my sisters, is that we walk around and we call ourselves a church and we call ourselves Christians. But the fact of the matter is that the many of us, the way we are living does not bring God glory, but it brings God shame because we're living lives in which we're one way on Sunday and another way on Monday and a, a different way on Wednesday and a different way on Friday and there's no consistency in our life and God doesn't get the glory. But I've come by to tell you that God's got to get the glory. One of the challenges I believe is that we've spent so much time teaching you all and teaching everyone about praise and worship uh, that we tell you to give God glory and you think that's something you do with your mouth, with your tongue. You think that's something you do verbally. Somebody give God glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, give God glory and you clap and give God glory and you shout. And I don't mind any of that, uh, but that means nothing if you're not giving God glory with your life. That means nothing if you're not giving God glory with what you do. That means nothing if you're not giving God glory in the way you live. That means nothing if you're not giving God glory in your community and in your neighborhood and in your family and in your household and your relationships and on your job, that in everything you do, that God should be glorified in my life. Good God Almighty. God be glorified. Somebody today, I, I want to give you that challenge. Ask yourself, in my life, is God being glorified? In this decision I'm about to make, will God get the glory out of it? In the statement I'm getting ready to say to this person who just got on my nerves, will God get the glory out of it? You need to be asking yourself in all that you do, how does God get glory out of this? The way I'm about to respond to this person, how does God get glory out of this? The post I'm about to post on social media, how does God get glory out of this? The thing I'm about to say in this conversation on the phone, how does God get glory out of this? My prayer for us all is that God will get the glory. Don't leave before the benediction. 
Don't get so caught up on the fact that God can do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. No, no, no. But get caught up on the fact to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. You know, it says throughout all generations because it's not just does God get the glory in my life? Does God get the glory in my generations? Will God get the glory in my children and my children's children? How does God get the glory in your children and your children's children? Because uh, they learn to glorify God by the way you live. But if all they learn to do is bust it by the way you live, uh, then you wonder why their life is all busted up. But no, they need to get to learn how to glorify God in the way you live. Live, and therefore they can end up giving God the glory and glorifying God in their lives. I need you to glorify God in your living in a way that it passes down through your generations. That is just what they know to do because they've watched you do it. If they've watched you be a hater, they'll be a hater. If they watch you give God glory in your life, they'll glorify God in theirs. Brothers and my sisters, my prayer for you is in your life, God be glorified. Look, if you've never accepted Jesus, the Lord and Savior of your life, that's one of the best ways to get connected and glorify God in your life is by giving your heart, your life to him. And if you've never accepted Jesus, the Bible says God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is not about you being perfect. To give God glory in your life is not about being perfect because all of us are sinners saved by grace. But at Community of Hope, we say it all the time. We're the Community of Hope where everyone has a chance. We don't care who you are, what you've done, who you did it with. Don't care if you did it last night or woke up doing it this morning. But when you're watching us, when you're connected with us, you're in the right place at the right time to become all that God has called you to be. And we believe, we believe in our heart, God's got a blessing with your name slam on it. If you're not saved and you need to give your life to Christ, today is your day, make that decision. Uh, if you're already saved but you need a church home, today is your day, make that decision. We want you to get connected to the body. If you need to rededicate your faith, today is your day, make that decision. Come on, I want you to be honest with yourself. If God's not being glorified in your life, you may be saved, you may have a church home, but yet you need God to be glorified. I, I'm going to pray for you as well. Make that decision. But today, let God be glorified in your life. If you're accepting Christ or uh, making Community of Hope your church home, just click the link or uh, text HOPE DECISION. HOPE DECISION, one word, to 474747. Text HOPE DECISION to 474747. We want to get connected, follow up with you, get you plugged in. We want to make sure God gets all the glory out of your life. Look, if you're deciding to uh, make community hope, your church home, or deciding to give your life to Christ, or even deciding to rededicate your faith, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Uh, it's my words, but it's definitely your faith. Say, God, I thank you for Jesus who died for me and you raised from the dead that I could be saved. Please forgive me for my sins. I don't want to live that way anymore. And right now, I accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior of my life. I thank you that today I'm saved. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I also would want to pray to someone who you're watching and you're reflecting, you're like, you know what, I, I do need some inner strength. You know what, I, I do need to get rooted in love. And I do pray for God to be glorified in my life. If that's you, I just want to pray specifically for you. God, in Jesus' name, I thank you for my friend, my loved one, this person watching who really wants to do right by you. I ask God that you, God, would give them inner strength that you, God, would root them in your love and help them to be able to understand how wide and how tall, wide and how long and how high and how deep is your love. And then, God, I ask, God, that even in all that you do for them that's immeasurably above all they can ask or imagine, let you be glorified in their life. 
I thank you, God, for what you're about to do in them and through them, that you shall get the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Community of Hope Church family, I pray that you have a blessed, blessed week. I pray that in this week God is glorified. You can give in all the ways. You see them right there, uh, Cash App and um, give dollar sign, give CLH and give LaFi and, and the links, etc. You still have time to give. But most of all, on this week, let God get the glory out of your life. Come on, y'all. Here goes the benediction. Remember, never leave before the benediction. And now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. God bless you, COH. We love you. Have a wonderful week.